Hey everybody, welcome to Connect and Cannabis brought to you by Razzle. I'm your host, Brian Holler. Um, we are here with uh, David Tran today. David Tran, of course, the uh, co-founder of Fairchild Events and uh, Goldfinger. He's here to talk to us about his journey up to this point, how he's adjusted to uh, coronavirus, what he's up to now, and uh, you know what's um, coming up in the future in terms of uh, trends and then on his own uh, personal front as well. Um, but of course, before that, I am love to talk to you about apricot analytics they're a full service product quality lab for cannabis testing and cbd hemp testing they have over a decade of analytical lab experience and have been working with cannabis products since 2005. apricot analytics understands the needs of cannabis and hemp producers because they are producers themselves they know the challenges and the dreams of cultivators and manufacturers and they're here to help they test your products for the good stuff like thc and cbd concentrations and help you identify any of the bad stuffs like pesticides mold bacteria and metals Forever. For more information, go to apricotanalytics.com or to learn more about their current investment opportunity, go to the Razzle Investment Marketplace at razzle.com. Uh, David, how are you, sir? Good to see you as always. Good, Brian. Uh, good. How are you doing, brother? You know, hanging in there, you know, uh, got over some technical hurdles today so that we can make this happen. So I'm very happy that uh, Zoom and Facebook are now finally cooperating with us. Yes, and we're here. Indeed, we are here. So speaking of that, how are you? How's things uh, today up there in beautiful Seattle? We're really good up here in Seattle. Uh, it's been beautiful here. You know, the kids are upstairs hanging out, doing some homeschool, and I'm here, you know, connecting to you and uh, talking to you. And I'm certainly thankful for that. Um, so kind of let's start at the, uh, the beginning. I'm, I'm from Seattle, and I happen to know you from uh, your time with Dope Magazine. Um, that was when I was first introduced to you as a, uh, you know, cannabis um, a person in the industry. Um, so. Um, Tell us what happened with Dope and kind of how that led you to um, today. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, fellow Seattle, uh, I've been here for 45 years, so <laughs> I love it here. I haven't left here at all, but, you know, my journey started here in the, the bar industry, and I was, you know, in the bar industry for, you know, still now for about 16 years, but when someone asked me if they, we, I wanted to get into a cannabis store, you know, that was a no-brainer answer for me. Uh, we opened a medical store back in 2011, and really quickly, I didn't really see a lot of marketing uh, materials that I could look at, and, you know, I realized very quickly I didn't have a lot of education, so, uh, you know, that's how Dope uh, was conceived. Sure. Uh, got together with some friends that actually uh, produced a magazine for the nightlife already, and together, very shortly, all five of us got together, came up with the concept of Dope. Uh, defending our patients everywhere. There you go. Uh, as in 2011, that really was the main subject. Uh, I realized when people were walking into my store that you know they were they were uh, telling me about how much this medicine over here helped them move away from this handful of pills, like jars of pills. And hearing those testimonials really changed my perception about what this plant was, you know, because up to that point, I was like, this is so much fun. I get to smoke, I get to have fun. And, you know, you really didn't really understand that, but it really changed the way I, I, I received it. And uh, the more and more we built Dope Magazine uh, and told the stories, we started learning more and started understanding that, you know, this plant really connected to people and really the stories that we were getting we're going to be about the people and how it affected them and how it helped them, how it got them through, how it gave them creativity to do things that, uh, you know, otherwise were maybe not uh, uh, yet unwrapped in their, their mind. And so, sure. uh, you know, that started in 2011 and, you know, we started out very grassroots uh, with events and then we started getting a little more into the digital and then of course events, which, you know, we just, you know, I, um, I'm very uh, used to throwing a lot of events and producing a lot of shows. So uh, yes. that was fun to be able to start doing that in cannabis when there wasn't a lot going on. Yeah, that's when I heard of you uh, as well. It was just you started throwing events after Dope had a little bit of momentum. And it was just like, oh, this is cool. You know, this is happening. If you were in the area, it was really, it was kind of a really cool thing to be kind of in on. You know, like it was, um, you know, it was pushing forward kind of the industry. It, it definitely served as something that really um, kind of, give me a little bit of a, 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 a an insight into the future of cannabis hey this is actually going to have some legs this is actually going yeah. to to do something it's not just a bunch of you know people who enjoyed getting stoned sitting around going let's make money you know it's it's so much more than that and of course as time went on uh you found that out as you were saying um and then of course some um, high times entered the picture correct yeah yeah and that was you know there's a 
long period from the beginning till when that happened. But, you know, High Times has been such a, you know, growing up, you know, in 93, that's when I started consuming uh, ganja, you know, behind a 7-Eleven. And, oh, sure. you know, the truth is, yeah, the truth is High Times was that, you know, magazine, it was that resource where I got to learn about the plant. I got to build the community and watch it, you know, and, and I watched it in awe. And, you know, that, that we really built that type of community, you know, when I was a young uh, man, so high times always been instrumental to me. So, you know, and throughout 2011, we did start Built Magazine. High times really was a inspiration, right? There wasn't really a lot other media in there. And if you were going to mention, you know, media, you have to mention high times. And so, sure. uh, you know, that journey from 2011 to 2018, we were building. And of course, High Times is the biggest magazine in the industry. But we really strived to, to, to bring a different angle. And uh, we started seeing other magazines build different angles also, some with the counterculture, some with, you know, for us, it was defending our plant everywhere. Right. And you have other magazines such as Sensi, who I advise with in a great publication. They really stress community and then grow it. So everyone started coming up with their niche. And in 2018, you know, you know we were continuing to raise money. We were continuing to build this company. Uh, you know, built it up to about $4.8 million in revenue. And that's really when, you know, they got to that point where we're like, okay, we need to continue to feel this growth because the growth was fast. And, yeah. you know, we got the, you know, we're very fortunate to win some Inc. 5000 awards three years in a row, yep. uh, you know, showing that we really grow really fast, but, you know, very exciting, but very scary. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. And you need the resources and you also need the know-how. And, you know, the truth is I've never grown a company this big uh, before, and it was definitely different. You know, I mean, again, this is where we're not talking about regular business, we're talking about a new industry. We're talking about a lot of compliance. You're talking about a lot of things that, you know, the people that we're working with have to go through, the hurdles, the 280Es, all the things right. that make it hard for them, uh, you know, kind of affects the ability for them to, you know, utilize us and work with us. So uh, it was always a constant, you know, working with the industry and, you know, and, 2000 uh, about the end of 2018 beginning of 2019 is when high times stepped in the picture uh you know it was great because me and matt Stang, <clears throat> we met earlier and you know uh always kind of sniffing around each other and then it just came to that point where you know like anything else timing in life is everything and yeah. you know, just one day it's just like wow this seems like a good fit well yeah it is a good fit yes uh well let's you know you want to try to do something and uh amazing part is that it, it worked out and uh you know kind of went through that transition first time you know going through an acquisition right. learning the steps of that these are all brand new things that we're learning and uh kind of integrating and of course i got to be an employee for the first time in 20 something years as right. i took on a position and you know enjoyed you know holidays like memorial day i'd have the day off you know yeah, you're of, like you whoa know, i was like what is going on here you know right. I mean? uh, so um that was a great experience too. And, uh, you know, it kind of met it's, uh, you know, kind of, you know, it was a good experience. And, you know, after that, we just were able to move on. So, yeah, I was very interested to talk to you for a number of reasons. And one is kind of what you're just alluding to is, you know, it reminds me of a, um, a famous like cliche, you know, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Right. right. Uh, right. and yeah. as, and I'm talking here to someone who actually got it right. And you were, as you were prefacing that you're saying, you know what, this was tough. <laughs> this was very difficult. This was very hard on a lot of levels. And then even when it happened, it opened up a whole nother kind of, okay, now what do I do? Right now what's going on? Right. Do I take a position, which you did. Um, but then of course that must've led into some other thoughts down the road because you ended up kind of diversifying yourself. Um, if you'd like to, if you care to elaborate a little more on that, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. As an entrepreneur, you know, you're, you're a builder and, you know, that's the that's reason right. why you kind of forgo the safety of a, a job. And, you know, sometimes my wife thinks I'm absolutely crazy, oh, sure. you know, for, for, for taking these risks and you're not guaranteed. What do you mean? You're not guaranteed the money. You're not guaranteed a success. It's uh, right. actually really scary. And, you know, to me, you know, selling a company is emotional. There's a lot of questions that you, you ask, you know, in, in your head, you think it's going to go one way and like, wow, we're going to work with each other. But ultimately at the end, it's not yours anymore. And you really just have to support it. And again, it's kind of letting the ship sail. Here you go. Yeah. It's sailing, it's going to fulfill its destiny. That's really how I was looking at it. It's just like, good, we built something very solid. It needs, uh, 
more support to fulfill its destiny. And again, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. But to me, going through this experience and understanding, you know, all of the, uh, the ups and downs kind of allows me to kind of look at it in different ways, you know, allows me to, <clears throat> excuse me, allows me to look at my next company and how I would build that so that, you know, perhaps if I wanted to keep it, I could and, right. you know, and, 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 or have different choices. And uh, at the same time too, you know, because, you know, what I'm doing now, which is Goldfinger's uh, group, which is consulting, mm -hmm. I could utilize a lot of this experience because a lot of these companies are going through the same uh, things that they're, they're, they're asking, seeking help for. So, um, so I think, going through this experience allows me to talk firsthand to, to them about my experience. Yep. And again, it's not the answer. I don't have the Bible. Uh, I just want them to mentally get ready for this. It's more about mentally preparing for it because money and all that sort of stuff, it's going to come and go. It's either a big X, a small X. It really doesn't matter to me. What I've gained the most is this experience of going through it and being able to help others uh, go through it so they can understand, uh, you know, what to expect. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's it's, it's really, um, it would make sense that one of the uh, ventures that you've basically morphed into and, and evolved into is consulting. You know, yeah. there aren't a lot of people who have had um, that level of uh, knowledge and um, success in transitioning uh, out of their one company into the new one in the cannabis space. So you are a very valuable commodity in that way for a lot of people. And in fact, I would guess that you also get some attention from people curious about jumping into the cannabis space. Yeah, most definitely. And the interesting part is, you know, as a media company, to me, we were selling, not only selling advertising, we were really selling our relationship with them and our connection. So That's ultimately, right. at the end, you made a lot of these relationships with these companies who went through the same thing as yours. They right. were advertising so that could they build their business. Should I build it this way? Should I build it that way? And I think, you know, uh, you know, and then building those events around that allowed us to, to continue to collaborate with everyone. So the good part is that, you know, it all starts with relationships, uh, the trust so that, you know, at some point they're just like, well, I could trust Dave. He went through it. Uh, you know, I've worked with him before. He's never screwed me over. This is kind of really where like, to me, your reputation comes into play. And, yeah. you know, it's always about that, you know, long-term mentality and you, you build those relationships. So the good part is that now it's just like a lot of companies are still going through these situations where they're building, uh, they're, they got their head down. They're going as fast as they can. And it's not for a lack of effort. It's just, oh, gosh, no. they just don't have enough people or resources to fill up, you know, what they need in order to succeed. So I think we come in, we help them with whatever it is, whether it's a business audit, whether it's, you know, they're looking to connect to, 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 to meet certain groups of people or whether it's marketing support. These are calls that we get. And, you know, we're working with several really incredible companies right now. Uh, <clears throat> And ultimately, at the end, it's all about results, right? Utilizing this is to show them results. You have to bring value uh, to every situation. I think, you know, I mean, just going back to my dope days, it's just like we were bringing in consultants uh, right. and we didn't know what we were getting. We didn't know what it was. It was so brand new to watch someone draw a racy chart and a right. SWOT analysis. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, dude. Yeah, but ultimately, like, wow. at the end, Competitive yeah. analysis. What is this? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, you're the most smartest person in the world. I'm going to pay you $10,000. I'm going to keep on paying you. And, That's right. You know, ultimately at the end, uh, you know, back then there just wasn't any proof of concept. So now there's so much more proof of concept. You can't hide behind those things. You really need to bring value. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you bring up a couple of many good points, but a couple that really I, I keyed on were, you know, this, there's a themes that I keep getting from this show, uh, you know, and continuing to do it and you continue and you're just echoing a couple of them, right? Um, make sure that you are being thorough, make sure that you are in you know, are, are researching the people that you're working with, but also realize that cannabis is a very, um, community-based type industry, right? People are very willing to partner with you and uh, and willing to go the distance with you and, and, and even willing to, in many cases, bend over backwards to help you, you know? So yes. if there was any space where you should not be the kind of, you know, person who's going to backstab or, you know, talk out of both sides of your mouth or whatever, it is cannabis. And not just yes. because it's new and, you know, there's a lot of kind of Wild West action going on or whatever. It's because of the people who are at its core. Yes, you know? agreed and, with you. 
a hundred and ten percent. And I think that's the nature of the plant, Brian. It's just yeah. like the plant has always been about sharing. It's always about that. I mean, if you really thought about it, I don't know too many viciously mean cannabis people or you, you know, it's behind the background. It's never in there. And so I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, it's a small community. You know, while it's growing exponentially from the time that I got started, sure. uh, you know, the business community is really tight. And now you have social media. Now you have these news channels in cannabis that are reporting these type of things. So I think, you know, we've seen the, 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 the people have come in and try to, you know, go in for the quick dollar. And, you know, are you going to trust the work with them in the future? Probably not. And so I just think like right now, it's still so early in the industry where, you know, your reputation is is important and you know that that's stressing the idea of like long term you know what i mean let's not go for the quick dollar even though as entrepreneurs that's what we're going to do we're by nature we're wanting more we're wanting more and when we get it we want more and we want more so i just think like the real uh truth is you know to do it right to think long term and that doesn't mean you're not gonna get a bunch of wins in between all of that right uh but ultimately at the end it's just like at the end if my goal is to be someone that has been known for my integrity, I helped a lot of people and that's my intention, then along the way, I'm going to, again, do all the things necessary to make sure that I have that. So. Yep. And honestly, like, you know, things like being spiteful, vengeful, et cetera, they do nothing but serve negative purposes for everybody around because bottom line is, if I'm going into an agreement with you, you know, we make an arrangement, we write it down, as long as we stick to that, yeah. you know, we're good. You know, yeah. and, and, you know, and stuff happens, right? Speaking of which, like, you know, current environment, right? Yes. Sometimes things that were not foreseen by anybody come and just throw a wrench in the whole damn works. Oh, and yeah. that's when the rubber really meets the road, if you ask me. That's yes. when you'll know who really is there for you and for the cause or who's just in there to, you know, make a quick buck, you know. And speaking yeah. of that, you know, how have the, been, the last few months been for you? Well, it's, you know, it's been challenging, you know what I mean? I think it's challenging because our, our business relies on other people succeeding. And, yep. you know, again, that's a good and, you know, in this case, a little bit tough, right? Yes. It's like, I've always, if you're succeeding, then you know what, you're going, I'm going to succeed at the end. Here, we have a certain, a special case where these guys, there's nothing we can do right now for event producers. And I guess I'm uh, alluding to... Uh, Fairchild, our new startup, uh, sure. you know, uh, specifically, because it's, uh, you know, basically an event platform. And uh, with all the events closing, uh, it's been uh, quite challenging. But the truth is, the timing has been good. We're really very early stage on it. We were actually uh, haven't really launched the platform already. So, uh, <laughs> say, you know, lucky. And, and again, this is not the case every time. I feel like I'm a product of just bad timing all the time. Uh, you know, when it comes to sure. business, right? I'm watching right, right. these other people who are like, just coming in like, whoa, I just slipped into all this success. And like me, I've been working my ass off. And every time <laughs> it's just like, I'm not getting those things. So I think right. there's a little bit of, you know, kind of a little bit of fortune that we didn't completely roll it out. It gives us time to build this platform. It does. Uh, and, you know, ultimately at the end, it's just like we, we, we sat there, and, you know, while at the beginning was very devastating to go, okay, we have four events. They're not going to go on. Right. 420 is not going to happen. What are we going to do? And we really realized too that, you know, everything is going to start turning digital right now. We knew right away, every single media company is going, okay, what do I need to do there? So we immediately got together and, you know, did something that, you know, again, I, I felt was impossible is to put together a, a charity drive, uh, a telethon drive, a digital Jerry Lewis style telethon. And right. we thought about it and I was still in Mexico and like trying to figure out if I was going to come home or, or right. stay there. And I was totally prepared to stay there for two months. I was going to be like, you know what, man, I'll learn Spanish. Yeah, I'll that's read, right. You know what I mean? We'll chill out. Yeah. I can do everything on the phone. That's right. Uh, but ultimately at the end, it's just like, I came back, we put our heads together and it's just ama amazing how having that network is so important because we called on so many people. And at this time we're at, while everyone is, you know, worried about what they're doing with their business. Everyone stepped in because we really made it not about us. We made it about feeding America, made it about charity. Yeah. And ultimately it showed me so much. Like you said, when it hits the road, who's there for you? Who's doing this? Who has the heart? And, 
you know, I know it's time, but a lot of people like when we're running hard, time is money, you know what I mean? So you can't do everything. So when now time is stopped, it's just incredible how many people just said, you know what, I'm going to step in, I'm going to help. And we were able to raise uh, money for Feeding America. And then we also got a chance to kind of go, okay, this is how we would do a digital event for someone. There you go. So if someone wanted to put on a cool award show or if someone wants to put on a cool that we can put that together. And now we know how to do it better because we actually experienced and did it. And I think, you know, this is the point of a lot of the things that you're talking about, all the pain and stuff like that. If you go through it already, you're simply going to know how it feels and you're simply going to know how to react to it. Uh, afterwards and I just think like that is just as important as anything else is to go through that even if it's painful even if you meet some people that screw you over and doing oh, yeah. that it certainly teaches you what to look for next time um, so you know I don't necessarily go back to feel and you know I mean I, I have the right to probably feel vengeful and revengeful to a lot of different people who has done me wrong but simply you know what I mean move forward and, uh, you know, focus on the future. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it's a, you, uh, you hit on another theme in your response there of this show, which is especially re like recently, uh, take stock in your own resources. What do you have right now? Make sure the best of it. And like you were saying, you know, you were grinding, you're grinding, grinding. You're trying to get out there. You're thinking probably ahead like you usually should as, a, as, as an entrepreneur, you're thinking forward, right? And all of a sudden, skirt, yeah. you had to stop, which actually has been, all I get is it's been ultimately beneficial, even though, struggle certainly there's a little bit of pain to it we all have experienced it um and you know, some much worse than others and we certainly our thoughts are with all those people always and you know we're really trying to do all our best to help as many people as we can and i know that's true um but on the other hand this is an opportunity for you to kind of go through something very difficult understand what that is like and respond accordingly and you know all you can do is that right david yeah, I completely agree. And it's all about perspective, you know, during this period of time, you got a lot of time to reflect. Right. I realized that I've been running a million miles per hour traveling and being away from my family and, sure. you know, just being able to wake up and have breakfast with them before I come down and, you know, work and being able to see them has been just so amazing. And it's just like those little things are just to me, ultimately, that is the the goal for me. That is to me, why I'm doing all this. So being able to prospectively think about, again, wow, if this is what I'm doing this for, then I can utilize this time to, to deeply connect with my kids and my wife. And, you know, they've just been so amazing through this thing. Uh, I know it could be absolutely, I mean, on the kids, it could be, you know, it, I mean, you know, this is a hard time for, 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 for kids, but yeah. you know, the interesting part, they're just like, they're loving on me a lot more than they ever have. And I'm just like, Oh wow, this is uh you know what I mean? I'll take it. Yeah, you can make a strong case that I think people are realizing that the true fuel, you know, that, that, that burns their fire inside, right? Yes. You know, it's, it's like, oh, wait, you know, I am doing this to provide for my family and to enjoy more time with my kids, relatives, friends, etc. Yes. Oh, and if I do that more, it actually makes me more effective over Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And it all comes down to, you know, why you're doing it and all of this. Why do you get up? Why do you, you know, kill yourself to right. get things done, you know, and that's, you know, for entrepreneurs, that's what it's all about, you know, is, is, you know, if they allowed us to work all the time, we would just do it. Probably right? do it. Yes. That, that's just by nature. But I just think like, that's the great part about having balance, you know, in, in your life is, you know, there's that, that, that life part too, you know what I mean? And yeah. again, life isn't always this. I'm always feeling like I got to do this so I can have a life. Uh, and, uh, you know, why not do something that I absolutely am passionate about and that I love. And I just been so fortunate to be in industries and businesses that I just, again, I, I'm excited to build it every single day. There's not a day where I wake up and go, Oh my gosh, I don't want to wake up and do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm Let's ready go. to go and do it. Yeah. Right. As you should. And speaking of going out and doing it, uh, I think, uh, doing that and while you're living a balanced life is a great way to end the show. Um, or other discussion, excuse me, before we do though, let's make sure everybody knows where they can find you, uh, and Goldfinger, uh, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. A bunch of different handles. But personally for me, you can go Tranimal Chronicles, That's right. uh, just kind of a fun little adventure through my little world. And, uh, also, you know, at the Fairchild, 
uh, is where you're going to start to see some, some things. Can't wait. We're about like two months away from launching that. So get ready for that. You know, if you're looking for events, if you're looking to produce events, if you're looking for those tools, it's going to be very exciting and you're going to love the content on there. Who doesn't love content? People are always wanting to see what people are doing out there and we're going to get a chance for, to, to, to see that all come to life. And then at Goldfinger's group, uh, that's our consulting group. Again, if you're going through, uh, you know, me and my partner, Brad Songhurst, Brad, you know, his experience is in uh, retail cultivation and uh, uh, operations. And, you know, he's taken a company from Ford, uh, you know, 40 to $100 million in revenue. So we, between us, we have really that opportunity to help you out. So uh, thank you very much. That's how you'll find us and feel free to reach out. Yeah, please do. Uh, yes, I highly recommend uh, you reach out to David, especially if you're a, a business owner in cannabis that's, you know, looking to scale, you got a bottleneck, something's going on that you really just are kind of having a little, you need a little bit of push or help with. He's a, a tremendous source for you to, uh, to reach out to and uh, is very welcoming and helpful, as you can see right here. So um, also, you know, you can find businesses like that on Razzle as well. So make sure you're going to Razzle if you're um, in the mood for uh, raising capital for your company, or if you need a, if we have a business database, a services directory, you can find a lot of great resources there as well. David, thank you so much uh, for being here today. I, I look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you, Brian. And shout out to Razzle. Appreciate it. Uh, our pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you. Take care.